Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. It's been a while since I've done this YouTube thing, so we'll see how this goes. So today's video is a, a Jacques Moves um, collection and wish list video. Um, I have my thoughts. I have um, a Le Bambino uh, bag review because I didn't see many of those online uh, prior to purchasing mine so I thought one may be helpful. Plus I also have some ready to wear to show and to tell a story time and um, a little bit of an accessory situation. Okay, so starting off with the Le Bambino uh, review. So this is the smallest ordinary Bambino size. I believe there is the Grand Bambino, uh, which is larger, but this is the original Bambino size because probably the biggest point <laughs> to this bag is, well, how much does it fit? Not a lot. So why I initially purchased this bag, um, it has been my everyday bag now for a good few months. I wanted it because of how small it was, so that actually was um, a selling point to me. Because when, you know, I go out day to day, I literally chuck maybe some a card, some change, <laughs> um, and a lip balm or a lip liner or something like that. So I wanted uh, those to be carried but I didn't want the chunkiness of a larger crossbody bag. Now I am quite small, uh, um, I have a thin frame, and therefore therefore, something of this size, um, in my opinion, suited me more than larger crossbody bags. What I want to make you aware of firstly, is that the dimensions that you will find on uh, a website, it's misleading, because that would be the size of the front here. As you can see here, the middle part uh, goes in quite considerably, so you do not get this full size here. So first point, it's smaller than the website say it is. So I will put um, at the side here what can actually fit into this bag. Um, I initially was under the impression I'd be able to fit a card holder. Um, a few little makeup bits and that would be it. Um, I can't actually fit a card holder. So this here is uh, my card holder, it's just the Chanel standard thin card holder. Um, and it actually can't fit with anything else in it. I can fit it in if I stand it right in the middle. I'm thinking the Louboutin and other card holders which are shorter. Um, may be better for this, um, but no, really, this can't fit much. Um, I put my cards in loosely, um, I fit a lip balm, a lip liner, which I do like to carry with me, um, I'm quite conscious of my lips looking dry <laughs> from old makeup, um, so rather than fitting them in my pockets and things like that, this for me is quite handy. A question somebody asked me once was, um, can phones fit? Now I actually have the smallest phone, um, I have the SE recent I think, from before, it has the body of an 8. I like my small phones, <laughs> uh, sadly they appear to still be getting larger, uh, which is not fun for the tiny bags, but um, I like my small phone. My phone does fit, my principle, I think a lot of people's principle is, um, they want their phone to fit. Now, luckily for me, it does fit. That's because I have a small old phone. So in principle, it works. However, I don't even put my phone in the bag anyway, uh, but it's just a, a checkbox for me. However, any phone larger than the body of an eight, it will not fit in here. Maybe you can do it diagonally and squish it, but you're just going to stretch out the bag. Um, but maybe that can be your way of justifying it if it goes in diagonally um, and you know that you're just gonna uh, carry it in your hand anyway or in a pocket. Um, so no, phones can't really fit in here. This is just for me um, to get the little knickknacks, car uh, cards, money, makeup. Um, and so if I'm going out with friends and I'm doing, you know, air hockey, bowling or something, I can sort of just swing it round the back and it's not falling, it's not clunky. So do excuse the bottom here. Um, I am, I believe, five foot five. Um, 
and I have it on the, I don't have it on the smallest setting nor the largest, uh, this is just whatever the setting that came, I'll show you close ups. I like it simply because, you know, with my thinner frame it doesn't look too chunky. I also quite like the shorter length, um, I think especially if you're quite petite in height. Um, it can also be quite flattering for you, crossbody. I really do like the uh, way this bag sits on me. Um, I have the black, I believe it's the normal smooth leather. Blah, blah, <laughs> smooth leather. Um, I believe they do do, they do do, a more pebbled leather in other colours. Um, how this is wearing, all right. <laughs> I think one thing to consider uh, with this bag is that it isn't overly expensive. I think something that's quite, um, I think this is something that makes this bag quite popular and quite appealing to most people is its price point. I believe this is 450 now and it is a full leather bag with the gold hardware. It is from a designer brand and at this moment quite popular, quite trendy. Um, personally for me, this, um, was the only Jacquemus bag I'd go for. I don't really like any others. Um, they're too trendy, too cool. I'm not Instagram cool. Um, so this just works for me. It's modern enough, trendy enough. It's got the Jacquemus core, um, but it's not, you know, the Lushquito, which is really out there, trendy, and all that jazz. So as I was saying, um, smooth leather, and it's worn okay. Now, with the smooth leather, I was worried, firstly, you know, scratches, nails, other things, I thought it was going to scratch awfully. Believe it or not, it actually hasn't. Um, the main issue I would say with this bag is, as when you open it, it's got really strong magnetic closure. And I will do a close-up because you can't see, but when you do open it like this to, you know, access the bag, it does crease as it naturally would. and. You know, you can start to see faint lines. You use a bag, it's going to get wear. It's what's going to naturally happen. Also, something I only noticed the other day is that some of the glazing on the back of the bag where there's a pocket, though I don't know, maybe perhaps a card in there, but you'd have to really stretch out the back pocket and I think it could look, you know, not too nice. Um, is that the glazing, I think, from uh, rubbing against like clothing, jeans, etc. The bag isn't, you know, a high-end designer bag. It's, you know, fairly cheap, £450. It's actually quite a bargain in, you know, today's standards of bag prices. Um, in terms of the lining, um, it's, you know, a light lining. So if you do, um, oh, I found £10 which is stuck to the magnetic part. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it is a light lining, so it is likely if you put makeup and bits in there, a pen or something, it could um, show on the lining quite, you know, easily, but it's inside the bag. And so there's that to bear in mind. Uh, but overall, I think for the price point of this bag right now, it's um, not overly heavy, it's quite light, it's not the most luxurious in the world, it's a well-made bag, it's somewhat cool trendy with the trends at the moment, it's this mini bag and I think price point, this is overall a really lovely bag. For me personally, I was surprised I went for this in the end, I just couldn't find a nice everyday bag uh, because I don't like gold hardware, um, I'd have kind of preferred the little J like they do in the smaller Jacquemus bags. Um, but yeah, overall I am very much enjoying this bag. I feel like it's only for certain people whose bag checklists are it can fit things in, a few things, not a phone, um, because this won't be for everybody. And I think the larger size would be slightly better for most people. So ready to wear. I have a story. So this is my Jacquemus uh, top. I believe this top was 350 just under. Um, and I had quite the experience with this top. Um, I purchased it thinking, you know what, it's trendy, it's fun, but it's also somewhat of a classic. It's a black top, a black crop top. Um, just out of curiosity, I believe this is a size 34. 
um, and I am a true, you know, UK size six, and it fits uh, fairly well. Uh, the one thing with this top in particular, why I haven't had much wear out of it, well, other than the main point, which I'll get onto in a minute, is it's quite restrictive. Um, it's made of a good material. Um, I believe it's made of hemp, which I wasn't sure what it was at the time. So after Googling, it's actually the stalk of the cannabis plant. So I thought that was quite interesting. It's a lovely, um, breathable, not too thin, yeah, not too thick, nice summer material, really. Um, however, with a lot of Jacques Mousse clothing, um, there are these sort of hook and eye closures, little um, hardware details. Now, the first time I was out in this top, I was shopping and I went to get changed in a changing room, try some things on. And I can't remember now whether I was taking it off, putting it back on. <laughs> but one of the hook closures, which, you know, makes the top wearable, <laughs> quite literally popped onto the floor, slid completely out, um, didn't snap, break, it wasn't by force, so I was very gentle, um, and it just completely slid out. <laughs> I luckily heard, saw, picked it up. Um, I wanted to know if I could go and get it fixed anywhere, send it off somewhere, I'm more than happy to pay, I just want to be able to use said top. Um, they said, sorry, we can't help you, it's nothing to do with us, contact Jacques Mousse. So I contact Jack Moose uh, and they said, sorry, can't help you, <laughs> you didn't purchase it with us. I don't believe there's any uh, freestanding boutiques um, in the UK, so there wasn't really anywhere I could take it. Um, so I was kind of stuffed. <laughs> but I thought I'll drop it into Selfridges next time I'm in. So I went away on a trip, uh, there's a Selfridges and I was going shopping and I, I lost a little bit so now <laughs> I only have two thankfully for me it was the least crucial um hook and eye otherwise I believe this top uh would look ridiculous on so long story short I now have PTSD and I'm um, worried about ever purchasing anything from Jacques Moose with the little hook and eyes and hardware because it simply just slid out um and you know when you pay 350 pounds for a top you'd like it to at least you know, not break the first time you wear it. Um, so now I've had quite a little use of this top. I'm quite cautious of wearing it. So on to the final Jack Moose piece I own. I believe this is called the Le Bob hat. <laughs> um, comes in the dust bag like the, did the top? I don't believe so. But the bag did anyway. Now, I am not a bucket hat person. I'm not overall a hat person. I purchased this just before I went to Barbados at the start of the year. It's, um, in my opinion, a little more of a stylish shake on a bucket hat, simply because of the fraying edge. I find it's quite safari, it's quite cute. I'll put up what the colour is of this on the screen. I believe I got the smallest size. I could be wrong, but it's a size 56. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure whether you'd consider me an average head, I have an average head, um, but it's quite cute this hat. <laughs> now with its light colour, um, it actually hasn't picked up any, any marks, any dirt or anything. I've been quite careless with it. The big, um, sell point for me, for why I purchased it before Barbados, is because of the wind, and it was quite windy at the time there. So I do love this little drawstring feature here, um, which means, you know, if you're on a boat or anything like that, and, you know, this wind, you don't have to uh, fear losing. Um, there's not much to say. It's a well-made hat. Um, it I believe it's cotton. I believe it's fully cotton. Um, I love the little hardware here. It's silver, which I prefer, though it's not too striking. It's not too in your face designer brand. I'd say, especially as the price point, I believe it's like, 85 90 pounds now i don't think it's overly expensive so if you do love your bucket hats if you are going away summer traveling um i would recommend they do an array of colors and there's nothing really negative i can say now on to my wish list whilst i still have a little bit of light i'm sorry <laughs> the light has faded pretty quickly although i was complaining about my ready to wear i really do love and I'm going to butcher this pronunciation, I do apologise. Um, the 
tassel dyed dress. It's a lovely silhouette. It's sort of dressy, but has a more casual side as well. You could probably dress up, dress down. It's definitely at the top of my Jacquemus wish list. And the other thing on my wish list, of which I almost bought, and again I'm going to butcher this, Le Sarge? Sarge? I took French. You wouldn't think it, but I did. <laughs> I love these trousers. Favourite pair I've ever seen. Um, if I still have the screenshot of uh, these uh, beautiful pink pair, for me that's you know my favourite shade of pink, not a Barbie pink, not too light. I think they look so elegant, um, but sadly I missed out on them. Every picture I've seen of a model wearing these trousers, they have heels on, and models are 5'8", you know, around 5'8", 5'7". I do not always want to wear a heel, <laughs> sometimes I want to be in flats, uh, ballet flats, um, a sandal or flat sandal. I don't want to be in heels all the time and I believe I just have to go and get these tailored quite considerably which does put me off slightly um, however then I'm sure they'd be fitting lovely. I don't know. I think actually those trousers are at the top of my Jacquemus wish list. That is it essentially for my Jacquemus video. I'm very sorry if um, you know with lighting and if I haven't said everything you would want to know, or I should say, this is my first video in a very, very long time. <laughs> uh, so it's quite daunting. But anywho, um, thank you for watching. I hope this was somewhat helpful. If you do have any um, questions in the comments, please let me know because, um, because I really would like to discuss. Happy to help with any questions that I could possibly answer. Um, because the reason I wanted to do this is to... Um, chat with people who have the same interest as me um so yeah thank you for watching and i believe what's my next video i believe my next video is a haul so yeah thank you